I get really irritated by a bin men. They have this rule that if the black bins do not fit neatly inside the green landfill bins, they won't take them. So now we have this situation where we now have a stack of five black bags that are now sitting on the pavement because the bin men take them out and they drop them on the pavement and leave them. And now those will just sit there. So the bin men think that they're punishing people for not following the rules by tipping the bins out. But the people who put the bins there don't care because they're not looking out on it. And it's the people who are walking past and the people who have to overlook it who now have to put up with that for the next week or two weeks because no one will come and move them. The people won't come back and take their bins back. And one of them's already split, so there's already food and rubbish starting to move around on the pavement and it'll end up across the road. And it's just... Why do bin men have to do this? Why can't you just take the blooming bin bags? You don't care because you don't have to live with it. But, oh my God, it drives me insane. Good morning. Absolutely glorious here today. They promised us four or five days of amazing weather and it's here. It arrived. Actually, it arrived a couple of days ago. So yesterday was glorious as well. And everyone's behaving like it's summer, even though it's still spring. Unfortunately, not everybody likes to uh, consider everybody else when it comes to summer. So there's a family who live across the road. I think it's a family. I don't know. And she really cranked up the music yesterday. It was ridiculous. It was just so loud. I could have heard it from the supermarket. And... A couple of neighbours went round and banged on her door because it was about eight o'clock in the evening and there are a lot of families with young children here, a lot of elderly people and you can't just behave like no one else matters. So they banged on our door and uh, she came to the door and they asked her to turn the music down and she was so aggressive. I don't think she was drunk, I think she's just got an attitude. And she was really aggressive, used really vile language at these two lads who were young, like youngish dads. I mean, we're talking late 20s, 30s, they weren't young, young. Um, and she told them to F off and called them the C word and all sorts of things. And they got really upset about that. One of them lived next door and one of them lived on a house that backed onto hers. And I heard, I, I saw them go around the back and they started trying to break down the back fence to get in to switch the music off and then of course it all kicked off out the front because other neighbours on my side of the street heard what was going on and they came out and joined in and, and it kind of really kicked off and it turned up to a, a stand up round the doorstep and word got round really quick and suddenly there were all the kids, the local kids who were hanging around on the street that evening, all turned up on their bikes and what have you, with their mobile phones, and they were egging them on, and they were like a pack of wolves, like just baying for blood. They just all turned up and started getting involved. And it turned into this full-on, uh, there was a racist language thrown around because the woman, there was a neighbour who lives on my side, and she's, they're a black family, and... This woman started uh, using inappropriate language, shall we say. And then, perhaps not surprisingly, as it escalated, the police were called. I mean, the police must have been called and they turned up really fast. I was really surprised that they turned up. It was two officers in a van, like a proper van. Like, you know, you put people in the back of it kind of thing. And they turned up and this woman did not care. She threatened the police officers. She threatened to get her son over, who's in the RAF. He's military, you know, he's military. <laughs> she got, she was shouting right in this, this police officer's face. And so the police officers are going, trying to calm all the other neighbours down, trying to get the kids to go away because it's just inflaming the situation. And this woman is standing on her doorstep screaming blue murder and all kinds of language at people refusing to turn the music down. The music is still blasting away at this point. And so people kind of back off and then the officers 
uh, try and get her to turn the music down. She said she's not going to turn the music down. Why should she? She said, I pay my rent. It's not nine o'clock yet. I can do what I like. And eventually she got arrested. <laughs> And they dragged her away into the van and all the kids are standing round cheering and screaming and recording it on their mobile phones. I mean, it's probably gone right round the local internet. Oh my goodness, it's probably on TikTok and WhatsApp and Snapchat and God knows what else. And so, yeah, so about half past nine they carted her off and that was the end of it. I heard a few little digs later on in the evening between the people who were still left in that house and some of the neighbours across the road, so I don't think we've heard the end of this. But this woman does this every year, and I think this year we've had a lot of neighbour changes, and I think some of the people that now live here won't put up with stuff like that. And she'll do it again, I'm sure she will do it again, because as far as she was concerned, she was doing nothing wrong. And I think it was more a case of she didn't want to be in the wrong. Um, she's probably not one of these people who ever thinks she's done anything wrong, always thinks she's right, and why should she have to listen to anyone else? So I suspect that this has a next stage in the story. Anyway, so I've, uh, I did my Morrison's haul this morning. One bad thing, but I, I kind of planned for it, sort of. I justified it. Anyway, so not bad this morning, actually. First, we have greens. Worth 79p, now 59p. It's quite a lot in that bag, so that's good. Uh, mushrooms. Two punnets of mushrooms I got. These were 95p down to 56, so two of those. Uh, I bought some Chinese leaf. Were 139, now 56. Um, let's get summery and healthy. Corn cobbets, which basically means one um, one sweet corn chopped in four pieces. This was one pound fifty down to forty five p. I quite like these. They're nice in the evening with dinner when I do a much lighter dinner, and a little bit of sweet corn on the side is a nice nibble. Um, carrots, because all mine are now in the freezer. I'm saving those for a rainy day. Worth sixty five p. Now forty eight p. So that's a good one. Um, more Alpro Greek style yoghurt. I really like this yoghurt. It's like a set one. Um, but there's something about it that's really nice. And because it's a plain one, I'm assuming it's not as processed as the others. This was £1.50 down to 45p. And I bought two because there were loads on the shelf. But there's only so much you can get through. And then the bad thing I bought was... Um, these are Lloyd Grossman garlic flatbreads. They were £2.49, 63p, and there's two in there. Now, I've, I wanted to, the last few days, I've wanted to do a flatbread for dinner, um, but it requires making it, and I'm just a bit lazy at the moment. So when I saw it for 63p, that's what, 31p of flatbread. And I've got plenty of things that can go in that. What I'm going to do is just warm flatbread, uh, fill one half with mushrooms and tomatoes and sliced whatever and then I'm going to fold it over and then redo it in the frying pan and that will be dinner and there's two of those so that's two dinners uh, yes it's processed I dread to think what is actually in the ingredients um, see this is how you know you've, you've got something ultra processed so what have we got in here we have all the usuals like iron and niacin and all that sort of stuff. Rape seed oil, roasted garlic, spirit vinegar, yeast raising agents, um, potassium sorbate, calcium prop propionate, dried parsley, sea salt, deactivated dried yeast, salt, wheat starch flavouring and wheat flour. That doesn't look as bad as some of the other stuff I've seen. So maybe this isn't as processed. Anyway, so I bought them, so I'm going to use them. That is the lot. Quite enough for a Sunday. That cost me £4.73. And as usual, I shall stick everything up there so you can see how much I actually save. This, again, is plenty of greens to keep me going. Um, I am almost at the end of my ultra-processed bread eating. Um, I've been working through the freezer, eating what I already have and not buying any new stuff. I think I'm down to like two bagels now and I've just been allowing myself to eat that as normal and 
getting my brain ready for there's not going to be any more. When it's gone, it's gone. So instead of doing a hard cut off and saying, right, no more, I'm doing it gradually. So I can see that it's that I'm running out of stores and I'm deliberately allowing myself to eat some every day to get rid of it quicker. But I'm mentally gearing up for the fact that, right, there is no bread now. Now you have to eat better things. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to focus on the bread. And when I've got used to not having the bread, the processed bread, I'll start to move on to something else that I think needs to be cut. Um, I don't know what that is at the moment, but, um, you know, if I can, if I could stop eating the bread in my life, my God, that makes such a difference. So keep you posted on that every time I do stuff. Um, I might show you how I do that garlic flat flatbread later. Um, that'll be fun to do. I'm going to get some of the, my remaining sausages out of the freezer and I might cut strips of sausage and then put mushrooms and I've got the, the Chinese leaf and whatever and make something fun out of that so I'll show you what that is like I think that could be a, it's a nice quick easy thing to do if you see a garlic flatbread in the supermarket and you think well it's just flatbread you just eat it as bread you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it so um, enjoy and um, yeah catch up with you soon Okay, so I'm going to make my flatbread dinner. Here's my flatbread out the packet. First thing I'm going to do is to warm it up on a frying pan because that will soften it up and make it malleable for what I want to do and also cook it. So a bit of oil in the pan. Stick it in the pan frying pan on a low heat. So what else am I going to put into this? Right, one massive mushroom. Uh, what else am I going to put in here? I have tomato and some courgette. And I also want to cook up a sausage which I'm going to cut into strips and lie in it as well. So, and, oh yes, some of that black sticks cheese which I still have to use as well. So, let's get the sausage out. Now these things are going to go back into onto the frying pan. Using this to stop the splatter and it also keeps my flatbread warm. As you can probably see there. I've got lots of this cheese on because it needs using. I have also a double Gloucester cheese which I haven't even opened yet. Still in the fridge. So this is going to be a very cheesy tea time. Which is also a rare treat. That'll do. Mmm. Mmm. Cheese. Cheese is the best. Whilst that's doing, I'm going to lay the cheese along half of my flatbread.
and then that will start to melt. So here's our flatbread, still nice and warm. And the rest of these things are now a bit fried, but not too much. So I'm going to layer these on top of the cheese. Like that. I'm going to layer the tomato on top of that. I don't think it's all going to fit, but manage like so and then because this is soft now <laughs> some of this will escape obviously there we go. Not too bad. And then I'm going to put it back into the pan. Oh, maybe we'd lose a bit. And then hopefully. Hopefully that will cook okay. Again, it's one of my one of my really slapdash meals where I just lob things together. Really, it's also quite a light meal, but it's still really really hot today. Just let that. And then I'll, I will flip it over and do the other side. I watched a really interesting video on YouTube the other day called Vaponomics Why Everything is Addictive Now and it starts off by talking about the rise and rise of vapes and how that's happened but then it also applies that in that to pretty much everything else that we do everything else that we buy and once you see it it's really hard to unsee I mean I've thought like this for years that you know, retailers are just out to screw you over for every penny that they can. And that's why I find frugal living um, and not buying stuff I don't need quite easy. Because with every purchase that I make, I'm thinking, uh, 
how is how is the retailer or the person that's selling it or whatever how are they keeping me hooked on it and I'm applying that now to things like the ultra processed food which is that that they 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 stuff these foods full of really addictive things like salt and sugar and and fats and things and it's addictive like anything else and whereas I've been able to take a step back from everything else and not feel that I have been duped into being reliant on a thing food is a problem um, because I know that lots of the food that I buy is unnecessary I know that a lot of it is uh, wants not needs and I feel that if I can just get over that hump of being addicted to food I don't need then I feel like I've won the consumer battle because there's very little else left that I feel stuck with I mean they're all things that we are stuck with we are stuck with either renting or having a mortgage we are stuck with having energy suppliers um, we are stuck with having to put fuel in our cars and paying for our cars and all that sort of thing but on there are on so many levels you can pull away from that and I've, for years I've seen this as my challenge, is to fight back against the, the, the dubious tactics that retailers use to keep fleecing you of your money. And certainly now where, you know, money is, is so hard to come by and living safely and comfortably financially is so hard to do because price of everything's going up and, you know, companies are finding even more ways to keep you hooked on buying stuff when you don't have the money and that in also involves things like loans and credit cards and god knows what else that involves keeping you buying stuff when you don't even have the money he also talked about things like subscription packages and products about how once they wrote you in paying for it once it's very hard to get out of because they work on the basis that you'll just keep using the same thing and you'll just keep paying and this that and the other it's quite a challenge and a challenge I enjoy to be able to keep using things that I like uh, whilst not paying for them so I've never paid for a subscription I use Spotify with the ads and I utilize the the 30 second skip button on a very regular basis or 15 second whatever it is I don't pay for Microsoft Office I use uh, an open source version called WPS and I've been using that for donkey's years and it's just like using Microsoft um, what other things do I not pay for I hate adverts so I don't watch ads on YouTube um, that seems to be quite an easy thing to avoid these days And a lot of things that previously had quite good free access are working out that the only way to get you to force you to buy it is to take away the access. So I've been using Ancestry as my family tree building um, program or website for a long, long time and I've never paid for it. Um, and they used to have quite a good access, but over recent months they've started taking features away. So particularly where I did the DNA test, so we all have the DNA profiles, um, my whole family did it. And um, I've noticed recently they've started taking away some of the access so that you can't see as much. And it's to force you to start paying for Ancestry. Now, lucky for me, my dad pays always for Ancestry. He never looks at Ancestry, he's never looked at it, ever, and yet he pays for it year on year on year. So when I go down there every three months and do my two weeks, if I spot that there are things that I want to look at, or other records that I want to see that I can't see on the free version, I just batch it all up and I sit for the computer or on his computer for a day and use it my dad said, well, why don't we just buy you a subscription? And I'm like, no, I'm, I can wait three months to look at a census return or, you know, download a photograph of somebody um, to add to the tree. I'm not paying the ridiculous amount of money just to access a few things and then not use it for months. So there are all sorts of 
ways that I, you know, you don't have to pay for everything, but we very much have this, I've got to have it all, I've got to have it now mentality, which is people don't want to listen to the ads on Spotify and therefore they pay to not listen to the ads. But not, in, not listening to the ads on the free version just involves a skip button. I can do that. I only use it for podcasts. I don't use it for music anyway because I don't like the music aspects of it. I don't look like the way it forces recommendations on you. I don't like the way that practically after every song there's an advert. Um, I have music that I like and I have it on my computer. I don't need to listen to Spotify. I don't want to cultivate, cultivate playlists. I literally just use it for podcasts and I only listen to um, four or five a week because I only really listen to them when I'm doing my cleaning work. So skipping the ads isn't a big deal. If you are living your life on Spotify, I could imagine that could become quite irritating and I'd probably then just go elsewhere to find my podcasts. Uh, but there's so much stuff that you, you don't have to pay to subscribe to. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about the subscriptions aspect of it. And I love these deep dives into subjects. It's a very recent channel that I found. Um, I will link it in the show notes. Um, do go and have a watch. And there's some other really interesting stuff. There's a really interesting one about how cities go bankrupt about how some of the some of the recent councils that have gone bankrupt how it happens and how the systems are just designed for failure it's just really really interesting um if you like to educate yourself if you want to know how things happen if you want to understand it then this is a really good channel for finding some of this stuff so do hop on over and have a look um I love to find out new stuff, I love to understand how things work, especially when it gives me the ammunition to protect myself against things, like just understanding how money and capitalism and addiction and retailing works helps me take a step back from it and not become a slave to it. So do, uh, do go and have a look, it's really, really interesting.